Thank you very much for the invitation and for the hospitality. It was indeed very well organized and I'm very uh, thankful to Anthony, to Jody, and to all team who works for SMRI. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, today I will present a seminar uh, about the asymptotic approach to the description of two-dimensional soliton patterns. Mm. First of all, I'd like to, to uh, tell you that this seminar is dedicated to the memory of Boris Kadamsev and Vladimir Petriashvili, who, uh, who uh, uh, derived uh, one of the seminal equations, which is currently very well known, kadamsev petriashvili equation. I will mention about this equation a bit later. Uh, in this page, I, uh, I will uh, briefly outline what I will be talking about. First of all, I will present some observable two-dimensional uh, water wave patterns. Then uh, I will explain that some of them can be described within the framework of cadence of the equation, but not all. After that, uh, the asymptotic approach to the description of two solid on solutions will be presented, uh, and results will be validated by comparison with completely integrable cadence of the model. Then after that, um, uh, application of asymptotic theory to non-integrable models will be presented. And especially, I will show that uh, such uh, approach um, uh, can be useful for the description of two-dimensional benjamin Ona equation, which is not completely integrable. Then we will discuss some related topics. And in conclusion, I will summarize the results obtained. Uh, first of all, you can see here a very nice picture which was presented in the famous book of Ablowitz and Segur, where we can see an interaction of two plane solitary waves. And this is uh, evidently a nonlinear interaction of two solitons, because here between the solitons, we have such a bridge, which is uh, the um, consequence of nonlinear interaction of these two solitary waves. Uh, then um, similar patterns were observed in many places. In particular, oops, uh -huh, here, you can see um, some uh, figures uh, from the um, paper by Ablowitz and Baldwin, who uh, obtained such nice photos on the um, western uh, coast of the United States. And according to these authors, uh, there is such a cl uh, classification of solitary wave interaction. So here you can see X type uh, interaction, here H type interaction of solitary waves, and the, at last on, the, on this uh, figure you can see Y type interaction of solitary waves. So as I mentioned already, such patterns can be uh, described within the framework of cadence of Petriashvili equation. But nevertheless, there are some other patterns which cannot be described within this equation, and we have to develop some other uh, theory or generalization uh, of the cadence of Petriashvili uh, theory. And the next one, uh, I will show you uh, some more. So uh, in this figure, uh, in this photo, you can see such cross waves. Uh, and uh, here, the fronts of solitary waves are almost perpendicular. And uh, of course, this is uh, beyond the application of Cadence of Petriashvili equation. One more photo, uh, uh, courtesy of Sergei Yerevenko, who took this photo here in Australia in Freshwater Beach. And uh, again, we can see such a nice interaction of solitary waves with this uh, interaction part. Um, Sergei uh, Yerevenko published a very nice book where he collected a lot of photos of interaction of solitary waves on water, in atmosphere, and in many other cases. <clears throat> now, you can see another example of interaction of solitary waves, so-called rectangular solitary waves. People say that this is a very common phenomena in France, which can be regularly observed by naked eyes. Uh, another, yeah, so, uh, all these uh, figures, uh, all these photos or uh, solitary waves can be observed on the surface of the ocean. But there are some other wave uh, motion uh, in the bulk of the water, which cannot be observed immediately. But nevertheless, uh, we can observe 
manifestation of such waves on the surface, uh, um, we called these waves internal waves. And here in this photo, which was taken from uh, Ebon, uh, you can see um, some solitary waves somewhere here. But this is a side view, and that is why these solitary waves are not very well uh, visible. But the nature of these solitary waves is because of the uh, non-uniform stratification. Here you can see the density uh, dependence on, uh, on depth. And uh, roughly speaking, if we approximate this uh, distribution of density by uh, two-layer fluid, we can say that uh, on the boundary between these two layers, there are some perturbations which can propagate as a solitary waves. We can uh, call it uh, nonlinear so, uh, internal solitary waves. And these solitary waves can be observable on, on the surface of the fluid because the roughness of the surface uh, varies uh, due to the propagation of solitary waves. That is why they become visible. And uh, next you can see here the fronts of two solitary waves. And these authors, Wong and Pavlovich, who published the paper, uh, they uh, processed a lot of such photos, which were taken not only from the side view, but from the top. And on the next uh, slide, you can see uh, the interaction of solitary waves. This is so-called Western Front, Eastern Front, then past uh, interaction, uh, Western and Eastern Fronts. And also what is important, there is a merge front or bridge between solitary waves. And so again, we can see the interaction of uh, internal solitary waves under some angle. And the uh, problem being is how to describe such uh, patterns, uh, whether these patterns are stationary in some uh, coordinate frame, what is the uh, speed of propagation of such a pattern, what is the angle of propagation of this pattern with respect to fixed coordinate axis, coordinate frame, and so on. So this is um, the uh, main aim of my presentation, to describe such patterns um, mathematically. First of all, I have to uh, remind again that some of such patterns on shallow water can be described by this uh, cadmium 50 Pierce equation, which was derived 50 years ago in the seminal paper by cadmium and Pierce And nowadays, this equation is very famous because uh, it has uh, some uh, specific feature. It is completely integrable. But actually, this equation contains two types of equation depending on the sign of this coefficient beta. As was shown for the first time in 1974 by Valery Drumma, this uh, equation can be presented in terms of L pair operators, which uh, is the basis for the integrability of uh, nonlinear equations. The same here, Zaharov in Shabbat developed a so called dressing method of solution of Kadam Sevkitviashvili equation. And some later, um, Zaharov uh, demonstrated that. If this coefficient beta is positive, this equation is completely integrable. But if beta is negative, in this case, he calls this equation weakly integrable. Uh, and it has some more interesting solutions in, form, uh, of, in the form of lumps, two-dimensional solitary waves, which are stable in space. But uh, what we will uh, study today, that what we will consider today is this oceanic case. For all oceanic waves, parameter beta is positive, and this equation is completely integrable. Then, uh, this is an example when the cadence of Petriashvili equation is applicable, when we consider was it plane waves which propagate basically in this direction, but, has, uh, but have uh, some bending of the fronts, very smooth variation along the y coordinate. Uh, in such cases, uh, the cadence of Petri uh, is applicable. Uh, then, uh, if we consider mathematical theory of this equation, first of all, it is convenient to uh, uh, consider the equation in the moving coordinate system with the linear velocity c. And in this case, uh, equation can be presented in a such a form. And what is interesting that this equation uh, solutions simply solution to these equations 
can be obtained through the so-called Hirota transform. Very simple transform, this one, which reduces the original equation to the bilinear form. And so you can see to this that this remarkable equation contains all terms as a quadratic functions of f, quadratic functions of f. At the first glance, it seems that this equation is even more complicated than the original equation. But in fact, it is very easy to obtain uh, some specific solutions of this equation, which are called solitary waves. In particular, uh, the simplest solution of this equation is this one, which is presented by function f, one plus exponent. Actually, we can consider here any constant plus exponent, and without loss of uh, generality, we can set this constant equals to one. But look, the structure of this solution looks like a structure of usual linear wave where omega and k are related through the so-called dispersion relation. So in this solution, two parameters are free, k and l, and omega is a function of k and l. But if we come back to the original variables through this transform, in the original variables, this uh, solution represents a solitary wave, which is shown here. Solitary wave propagating at arbitrary angle with respect to x, uh, so here you can see by this blue line, this is a front of solitary wave. But formally speaking, within the framework of Cadence of Kitvia, this angle should be relatively small. So angle phi should be much less than unity for the applicability of Cadence of Kitvia equation. In this uh, representation, amplitude of solitary wave is a function of k only, where k is one of the component of wave number. Uh, half width of a solitary wave delta is also a function of k only. And then the dispersion relation can be presented in terms of amplitude of solitary wave and angle of propagation, uh, where 10 phi is L over k. The speed of propagation of solitary wave is a function both of uh, amplitude and uh, angle of propagation. So this is just exact solution. But what is remarkable that in the similar way, we can obtain a two soliton solution. And to obtain a two soliton solution, we can take a combination of two, linear combination of two exponential functions plus this additional term. In this additional term, it is very important that there is one more constant, which depends on four parameters, K1, L1, K2, and L2. And this is very important uh, quantity which uh, controls the um, uh, bridge between solitary waves. Here you can see a typical uh, figure, typical pattern uh, of two soliton solution in original variables. And we can see here two, uh, soliton, uh, two uh, solitary wave fronts uh, with this bridge between, the, between them. This parameter phi can be presented as a logarithm of B where B is given as a function of amplitudes of original solitary waves far from the point of interaction and angles of their propagation. And according to this definition, this parameter should be non-negative, should be non-negative. Only in this case, we obtain here a real solution, a real and non-singular. Otherwise, we can obtain non-physical solution, which is singular or complex. Uh, here you can see a typical pattern uh, of two uh, soliton interaction. And depending on this parameter B, it can be either such a type interaction or this type uh, of interaction. But what is interesting that this parameter B, if you look at this structure, it can be um, uh, in the limit. It can be equal to zero when numerator goes to zero or it can go to infinity when denominator goes to, 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 to zero. Okay, in this case, in these two limiting cases, we obtain different patterns, different patterns. But uh, especially uh, the, um, the pattern of a, of a special interest is when this parameter B goes to zero. When it goes to zero, we obtain such a pattern, which is shown on the left-hand side. And there is another limiting case when B goes to infinity, we obtain such wide type interaction of solitary waves, uh, where we can have actually a uh, triad of three solitary waves propagating together, okay, as a stationary pattern. 
What is uh, interesting from a mathematical point of view that uh, in the case when B uh, goes to zero, we obtain a solution just as a linear combination of two uh, exponential functions, very similar to linear solution. And moreover, as was shown in some other papers, we can obtain three soliton solutions which contains only exponential function, four soliton, four uh, exponential functions. So very interesting um, uh, solutions. Uh, now, let us consider the general case. In the general case, when we have two soliton solutions, it can be shown that it is always stationary solution in some coordinate frame. Uh, from the general point of view, it looks a bit uh, amazing because each solitary wave, this one and this one, uh, move with, uh, moves with it, its own uh, velocity, with uh, uh, um, its own direction. And moreover, even this uh, bridge between them also moves in some direction with its own uh, speed. Nevertheless, uh, analysis of two solid solutions uh, shows that it is always stationary in some coordinate frame. And to find the coordinate frame, we can make such formal transformation. This is just orthogonal transformation from the basic coordinate frame to some unknown coordinate frame. And after that, if we present the solution in a such a, in a such a form, and if we require that solution depends actually on uh, uh, psi minus ut and eta, only on these two spatial variables. In this coordinate system, this pattern is stationary, and we can always find what is the angle of propagation and what is the speed of pattern propagation. So here you can see an uh, exact solution in two different instants of time, and you can see that they are indeed stationary, move, uh, moving at some angle delta with respect to original axis x, and so within the framework of uh, Cartan's Kitashvili equation, all these parameters can be found. To my surprise, uh, this was not published before, and so it was rediscover uh, discovered in, uh, in uh, one of my papers. Uh, one of the interesting things is so-called a symmetric pattern. Symmetric pattern is when uh, solitary waves, both of them, uh, move in the same direction, in the same direction, and with the same amplitudes. In this case, this pattern moves along the axis X. So here we can see uh, X type interaction or symmetric interaction of solitary waves. And here we can see H type interaction. But in the limiting case, if parameter B goes to uh, zero, we obtain here a Y type uh, interaction of solitary waves. What is interesting that mm, in this case, the solution can be presented in a such in a such a form, uh, which depends on this parameter b. And uh, expression for the parameter b is shown here. Okay. Is shown here. And so we can see that parameter b cannot be equal to zero, but it, but it, can, uh, it can go to infinity uh, when the denominator goes to zero. In this case, we obtain a triad. And uh, if we consider maximum of wave field, between solitary waves, namely in the bridge between solitary waves, we can see that maximum of wave field depends on this parameter b. And um, in the limiting case, when b goes to infinity, we obtain that the amplitude of the third solitary wave is four times greater than amplitudes of original solitary waves. That is why in some papers, uh, authors call this type of solution as a rock wave. Because according to definition, if the amplitude of a uh, new wave is two times, at least two times greater than the basic background, in this case, we call it a uh, rock wave. But here, you can see that it is four times greater. Four times greater. Uh, it is also, uh, uh, should be noted, that there is some restriction on the relationship between parameters L and K, or in other words, between the amplitude and direction of propagation. And this restriction is shown here. So there is a critical uh, component of parameter L. And this, this means that solitary wave uh, can, uh, can propagate on, at some angle to axis X, and this angle cannot be less than some uh, some critical value. 
some critical value. According to the Kadam Sirkitliashvili equation, amplitude of solitary wave uh, should be less than 10 squared phi. But taking into account that with the uh, Kadam Sirkitliashvili equation, uh, this phi, uh, uh, angle phi, should be much less than one. It is not shown here, much less than one. So actually, we can obtain such a restriction, which was very well known in other papers. Uh, so in the limiting case, when the denominator equals to zero, here we obtain such a symmetric Y-type interaction, uh, which is represented by triads. So within the framework of Cadman's really equation, everything is very well known. But what to do if we deal with equations more general than Kadams of um, In mathematical physics, uh, it is very well known that there are some other models. For example, big one, uh, quasi one dimensional Gartner equation. Uh, if there is no dependence on uh, coordinate y, this is Gartner, uh, classical Gartner equation, which is completely integrable. But with uh, y, it is non integrable. And we have to understand what happens. Uh, when two solitary waves interact uh, within the framework of this equation. And also, uh, it's very well known and very popular in mathematical physics, this type of equation, which is known as quasi one dimensional Benjamin Orner equation. Again, for one dimensional case, the Benjamin Orner equation is completely integral. Another interesting problem is uh, in general, when we consider two dimensional waves uh, on uh, shallow water which are described by two-dimensional Boussiniesque equation without any restriction on the angle of propagation. In this case, we have such Boussiniesque type equations. Uh, and again, we have to understand what happens um, within the framework of this, uh, uh, of this set of equations. Uh, in uh, our recent paper with Ostrovsky, we developed, um, we developed a kinematic approach to the description uh, in general of solitary waves in non-integrable systems. So the idea is very simple. In fact, when we have two solitary waves like this one interacting under some angle, if this pattern is uh, stationary, this means that the projections, X projections of each, each of these solitary wave on the axis X should be equal. And so from this uh, point of view, we can obtain such a relationship that uh, velocity of the pattern can be presented as component of one uh, of one solitary wave uh, in projection to axis x, where gamma is the angle between the vertical axis and uh, front of solitary wave. And similarly for another one and for third one. So we have such simple kinematic relationship. And if we solve, for example, one of such uh, equality plus uh, taking into account that uh, the total angle gamma is a sum of angles gamma one and gamma two, this set of equations. We can uh, eliminate, for example, gamma two and obtain a solution in terms of gamma one, which can be presented through the measurable uh, parameters. We know what are the velocities of solitary waves or amplitude of solitary waves far from the point of inter, uh, intersection. They are simply solitary waves. Uh, single solitary waves. And we also can find what is the angle between solitary waves. So through these uh, measurable parameters, we can find what is uh, angle between uh, vertical axis and uh, front of solitary wave, gamma one. And if you know gamma one and gamma, we can find what is gamma two. Okay, so we can find everything. And after that, we can find what is the speed of uh, propagation of the pattern with respect to the um, given coordinate system. So I have to explain that there is a difference uh, between two coordinate systems. In one coordinate system, which is presented here by y prime and x prime, in this coordinate system, a uh, pattern moves along this axis x. But in reality, when we have solitary wave, our, in our coordinate system, x and y, pattern moves under some angle. And our aim is to find what is the angle of motion. In other words, what is the angle between axis x prime and axis x. And from this kinematic relationship, we can find very easily that delta, the angle, is gamma 1 plus phi 1. So after that, when we know uh, uh, gamma and delta, we can find 
the speed of propagation of this pattern. After that, uh, it can be found uh, what is the um, parameters of uh, solitary waves moving in the um, uh, in this in the uh, fixed direction. Let us consider for simplicity uh, a symmetric case when we have two solitary waves of the same amplitudes. So when we have such a pattern which moves in this case along axis x, symmetric is always in, in one direction in axis x. So before we will apply the theory which I will present now to a more complicated equation, we can validate the results with the cadence of Petriashvili equation, which is completely integrable. So what we are doing here, we consider, we consider here uh, a symmetric pattern. In this case, if we consider stationary solution in the coordinate system, this means that uh, function eta actually depends on psi and y, because it is stationary, where psi is x minus the pattern t. So this is a moving coordinate system. If this coordinate system, the pattern is fixed, okay? So in this case, we can transfer the um, cadence of Petriashvili equation can be transferred to this equation. This is just exact result. So far, there is no any uh, approximation. So we obtain this equation, which is nothing but Businius type equation. And within this Businius type equation, Y plays a role of time. So we can consider that this is uh, equation in X and T uh, uh, space, where uh, C naught linear velocity uh, is uh, to V pattern over C. Oh, we see. So if we have such a uh, Businius equation, we can find one soliton solution for this uh, equation. So one soliton solution can be easily found. It is presented here, but we consider in general soliton solution on a pedestal. So we can take into account arbitrary pedestal, which is very important to us. Why? I will explain in a minute. So uh, this is just an exact solution. If this pedestal is slowly varying in space, in this case, we can uh, assume that solution in a such a form still applicable, but now it is approximate solution where amplitude and other parameters are slowly varying functions of time. And we can apply an asymptotic method to uh, describe the variation of these parameters in time. This is very well known procedure, which was um, in particular uh, developed uh, by Gershkov and Ostrovsky. And so we can do that. And now we assume that um, the uh, typical scale of variation of pedestal is much greater than the half width of solitary wave. From this point of view, solitary wave can be considered as a particle moving in some external field, in some external field. Uh, so it can be presented now in a uh, following way. If we have two solitary waves uh, located far from each other, so that the distance between them is much greater than the half width of each solitary wave. So we can consider that, for example, this solitary wave, this coordinate C S1, is in the field of this solitary wave. Okay, and so we can consider that this is just a point particle moving in this external field. And then from simple kinematic uh, reason, we can uh, say that the rate of change of coordinate of this solitary wave S1 uh, equals to the speed of this, of this solitary wave uh, in, a, in a pedestal generated by this solitary wave, actually by the tail of this solitary wave far from its center. Okay, so if we use this one, we obtain that rate of change of first solitary wave, of coordinate of first solitary wave, equals to this, which is exact formula for the solution, where P2 is a pedestal generated by another solitary wave. And similarly for another solitary wave, it has a pedestal which is generated by first one. And so we have such a set of two equations, simultaneous equations, and this simultaneous equation, if we substitute here, solution in the form of solitary wave, second uh, solitary wave is a pedestal. Here, first solitary wave is a pedestal for this solitary wave. Okay, and then here, uh, there is a difference between uh, positions of two solitary waves. 
So the, formally speaking, this uh, difference S2 minus S1 should be much greater than the uh, half bit of a solitary wave. This set of, of equations can be solved analytically, can be solved analytically. And uh, here you can see the solution. So if we consider solitary wave in X and tau plane, so this is just the usual uh, picture of interaction of two particles in space. So time and space, okay? That is why the solution can be presented in a such a form where tau effectively is a time as a function of S or uh, bearing in mind that actually in our equation uh, tau mm, is y coordinate, we have uh, this formula which describes which describes a shape of a front of solitary wave on x and y plane. S is x and y is vertical coordinate. So this uh, formula uh, presents a shape of, of a front. And here you can see that you can think that y is time. In this case, this is, <coughs> in this case, this is xt diagram for the particle interaction. Or otherwise you can uh, see that this is actually a front uh, of one solitary wave interacting with another one. And from the solution obtained, we can clearly see that there is a phase shift between the initial front before interaction and after the interaction. Then formally speaking, uh, the solution within this uh, yellow spot um, is incorrect because we assume that the distance between solitary wave is very big in comparison with uh, the width of each of them. But in fact, it happens sometimes when we develop a synthetic, a synthetic theory, the solution sometimes works even beyond the formal range of applicability. And in this case, it works fortunately even within this um, uh, yellow spot. And as a result, we can calculate um, the phase shift uh, on the basis of the, of the solution obtained. The phase shift can be obtained uh, very easily if we, uh, I, can't, I don't know how to, ah, uh -huh, here it is. No, in the previous slide here. So if we consider the solution, uh, this one, which is presented by red line, if we can consider this solution obtained within the framework of this uh, set of equations, and if we consider separately solitary wave freely propagating without interaction with another one. In this case, we obtain that this solitary wave will propagate along this dashed line. So we can see that there is a phase shift in y direction, and this phase shift can be easily obtained uh, from the uh, solution derived. Here it is. What is interesting that this phase shift, uh, which is derived within the framework of asymptotic theory, exactly equals to the phase shift, which follows from the exact solution of cadden circuit equation. So this tells us that such approach uh, is very robust. And moreover, we applied such a solution even in the critical case when L equals to L critical. And in this case, we have a triad of interactive solitons. So on the next slide, you can see nearly triad solution when the phase shift is very big you can see here. So in the limiting case, this pair of fronts goes to plus infinity, and we simply have such a triad, one solitary wave, another solitary wave, and the third solitary wave with a, with a higher amplitude. So everything was confirmed, the framework of Cadence of Pitvashvili equation, and after that we applied um, such an approach to the non-integrable benjamin Orner equation, and for benjamin on equation as a starting point, we can start with the solitary wave solution. Here it is, exact solution of this equation, uh, which propagates at uh, arbitrary angle, but the angle should be again small with respect to axis X. And so this is exact solution. On the basis of this exact solution, uh, we can consider again two solitary waves. We can't obtain two soliton solution but we can have one soliton solution and another one. And so our aim is to investigate what happens after the interaction of two solitary waves. So applying the similar approach and assuming that um, the pattern 
is uh, symmetric for simplicity and stationary. In this case, we can reduce uh, two-dimensional Boussinesq equation to this one-dimensional equation, where again, y plays a role over time. So this is, to a certain extent, new equation, which was not considered before. Maybe it is integral, maybe not, I don't know. But nevertheless, we can obtain a solitary wave solution to this equation. Solitary wave solution on a pedestal is shown here. This is, by the way, algebraic solitary wave. It's not exponentially decaying, but algebraic solitary wave. And then uh, we can, again, derive a set of equations like this one. And this set of equations, again, is solvable analytically. After the solution of this set of equations, we obtain the dependence, uh, time x dependence, which can be presented through the mm, incomplete elliptic integrals of the first and second kind, here it is, uh, where the parameter phi is defined uh, here through the 10 phi. Uh, and again, we can find that there is a phase shift of solitary waves. Phase shift is given by this formula, which is presented through the complete elliptic integrals. And also, we can find that there is a critical uh, value of uh, L component of the wave vector shown here. And in the limiting case, we can obtain again a uh, um, triad of interaction Benjamin on a solitary waves. Uh, this uh, solution uh, cannot be unfortunately validated, or can be validated, but we do not have uh, any uh, exact solution or numerical solution of Benjamin on equation. But some time ago, it was published a paper by Tsushi and Oikawa, uh, who uh, considered numerically a solution of uh, two-dimensional Benjamin on equation uh, in a such, uh, with a such initial condition shown here. Unfortunately, in this calculation, the angle between uh, solitary waves is very big. So that um, quasi one dimensional uh, Benjamin Orner equation is inapplicable. Uh, and the angle in this, the angle between solitons in this uh, calculation was uh, uh, twice of this angle phi, so 140 degrees. Uh, nevertheless, what they obtain that when they start with such initial condition, eventually they obtained that the pattern moves steadily, moves steadily. And on the next uh, figure, you can see that after a while, we can have such, uh, such a pattern. This is due to reflection from the rigid boundaries. Okay, but this part is uh, stationary moving. And they also wrote in the paper that it seems that there is uh, there exists very small phase shift between fronts before and after the interaction. They did not uh, present what is the actual phase shift. But uh, when we applied our uh, approximate theory to that, we obtained that in this case the phase shift indeed very small, 0.85. And taking into account this scale 30, 40, it's indeed hardly visible on, on the figures. So basically that's it, what I was going to present um, within this uh, seminar. But now I'd like to show you something more interesting, which is relevant to such uh, solutions. In particular, uh, we can calculate, as I mentioned already, uh, the phase shift between, and we can uh, also find that even in the case of benjamin Orner equation or cadence of Petriashvili equation, there is such a restriction that angle phi between fronts should be uh, greater than some critical value, which depends on the amplitude of solitary waves. So angle cannot be too small if the solitary wave amplitude is fixed. The question is why? Why we can't find a solution when angle between solitary waves is less than this critical value? The answer is very simple. Because if we consider a limiting case, when, uh, when uh, these two solitary waves uh, simply parallel, when the angle is zero, in this case, we have two parallel solitary waves. Let's assume that initially they are with the same amplitudes. 
but it is impossible neither in uh, within the frame, framework of Kadmus of Petriashvili or within the framework of uh, Benjamin Orner equation, because in such situation. Cadence of Petriashvili equation reduces to the Korpovic de Vries equation. Just a parallel propagation. But if we have two solitary waves propagating in parallel, this means that there is just an interaction between them so that one of them becomes of greater uh, higher amplitude and another one is a smaller amplitude. So such an interaction is always non stationary. We can't obtain stationary solution for such a pattern. And that is why when we have a small angle between two uh, solitary uh, soliton fronts. Again, the, the, the angle is so small that such a pattern cannot be, uh, cannot be uh, stationary, it's quasi-parallel. In this case, we will have here uh, a creation of such a uh, wave uh, pattern, wave front, and this solution becomes non-stationary, so that this part increases in space, and we have solitary waves with this uh, bridge between non-stationary bridge between them. And what is interesting that in the study of Kadama Tsuja Aikawa and uh, in the paper by Kadama, um, it was considered such initial condition when we have two fronts at the initial instant of time. So this is a um, uh, top view of these fronts. And the question is, what happens further with such solitary waves? Here you can see the result of numerical calculations, and you can see that indeed between these solitary waves there is a bridge uh, which actually represents a new solitary wave, which uh, whose uh, width becomes uh, uh, longer and longer. So this is just a nonlinear propagation, and uh, behind of this pattern we can see the creation of two plane solitary waves propagating at some angle. So this is indeed a non-stationary solution, uh, which uh, we cannot obtain within the framework of stationary theory. One more interesting uh, pattern, which is related to so-called um, Mach reflection. There is a relatively simple and uh, trivial Mach reflection when we have such a triad solution created by a symmetric solitary waves with equal amplitudes. And then in this case, we have a triad. And this triad can move uh, along the solid surface. Okay, in this case, we can interpret that there is incident wave and reflected wave. And due to nonlinear interaction, we have such a pattern, such a third uh, solitary wave which simply moves along this uh, uh, solid surface. This is so-called uh, usual case of reflection. But there is uh, also non-trivial case uh, when we have uh, um, solitary waves with different amplitudes. So here you can see incident wave and reflected wave with different angles with respect to this axis. Uh, and in this case, such a pattern moves uh, not along the mm, uh, along the uh, uh, this surface but all this pattern moves along some direction this one and the direction of motion can be predicted within the framework of our theory because we develop the direction of propagation of such a triad so this uh, Mach steam uh, it moves along this surface but all picture is actually not stationary it moves under some angle to, to this solid uh, surface and here you can see an interesting uh, application of this theory if we consider for example this situation when we have a solitary wave plain solitary wave in coming to this wedge to this wedge after that it is split it into two parts one uh, propagates along the upper surface and another one along this uh, lower surface okay but if we consider only upper part we can see that this is exactly uh, Mach reflection non-trivial Mach reflection and in this case we obtain this can be presented if we turn the coordinate system so that this solid surface now it is horizontal in the horizontal surface we have this incoming wave then after reflection we have this is 
uh, incoming wave and this is reflected wave. And this is a steam, Mach steam, which propagates along this uh, solid surface. But all pattern propagates under the angle, angle phi uh, with respect to this surface. What is also interesting to notice is that it was um, uh, made a laboratory experiment, water wave experiment by Lee et al. They published uh, a paper where they observed such type of interaction, Mach interaction. So this is actually a figure, this is a photo from the experiment. And we can see here, uh, this solid surface is on, uh, represented by this plane. So this solitary wave moves along this uh, surface and it creates, this is incoming solitary wave and this is uh, reflected solitary wave. So this was observed and validated within the framework of this remarkable uh, laboratory experiment. So basically that's it, what I was going to uh, present here. Here you can see in conclusion, the main uh, results. So we developed a kinematic uh, theory, which allows us to describe solitary wave interaction in non-integrable system. Then it was developed an asymptotic uh, method for the description of two solitary waves in stationary coordinate system. And application of asymptotic theory to non-integrable models has been demonstrated uh, on the basis of uh, two-dimensional Benjamin on equation. Uh, there is some uh, problems for the future research. And in conclusion, I'd like to show you a recent publication relevant to this, uh, to this presentation. So that's it. Uh, and I'm ready to answer to the questions. Hi, uh, Yuri. Uh -huh. Good to see you, sort of. Yes. <laughs> um, Alva, thank you for your, uh, for your, uh, for your talk. Um, I have a question. Um, so um, you present these two-dimensional um, equations, non innovative equations that support um, solitary waves. Uh, is there anything known um, about uh, um, any rigorous derivations? So, you, I mean, lots of kind of asymptotic equations, they, um, they don't kind of solutions of those uh, um, equations don't survive in the full uh, primitive equations or Euler equations or, or, or what have you. I mean, KDV is very special there. So a KDV equation does, you know, there's rigorous theory by Guido Schneider and, and co-workers that show that this, um, uh, um, that the equations are close, but that's, is, is there anything known about those two dimensional um, equations? Uh, uh, to, uh, yes. Uh, first I mean, it goes beyond just doing asymptotics. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, if, you, uh, if your question is about derivation of uh, 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 basic equations, the answer is yes, because Boussinger's set of equations is very well known and it uh, was derived uh, long ago. Then uh, two-dimensional, quasi uh, one-dimensional uh, Benjamin Ohner equation was also derived uh, in particular by uh, Roger Grimshaw. No, no, I, I don't mean derivation. Derivation is clear that, that I understand the derivations of it. I, I know that. But is there anything known um, of how close solutions, so the equations are close in, in some asymptotic sense, but is there anything known that the solutions are close to? To what? Well, you derive it from, let's say, Euler equation or from, from whatever parent equation you derive your, your two-dimensional solitary wave equation, some kind of asymptotic expansion on, you know, shallow, um, you know, long wave approximations, things like this. So the, the equations, you, your model equations and let's say Euler equations, they're close asymptotically, but that doesn't say anything that, about that the solutions are close as well. Uh, as far as I know, uh, if we derive uh, through the rigorous asymptotic method, um, one of the equations, for example, two-dimensional Benjamin on the equation, we can obtain uh, exact solution uh, in the form of solitary wave propagating at the angle. But if it is single solitary wave, we can always uh, rotate a coordinate system so that we can obtain a one-dimensional Benjamin on a solitary wave, which was validated both in the experiment and um, in numerical uh, calculations. Okay. Right. As for the two-dimensional 
so as for the two soliton solutions uh, in this case i don't know any uh, any uh, exact solution or even approximate solution for this case so what is developed in this uh, study is for the first time when we consider to uh, no not the, for the first time because uh, it was also considered by some authors numerically but we presented here uh, asymptotic theory which allows us to uh, consider interaction of two solitary waves but i can't compare such a solution with something else so it still needs uh, validation okay uh, on the other hand what i showed before uh, about the mach reflection uh, in laboratory experiment it was very good uh, relationship between theoretical numerical study by kadama and others with uh, uh, laboratory experiment by Liu and others. So there is such a validation. Okay. So let's hope that uh, based on yeah, thank you. Yeah. Say. Uh, interestingly, if you look at deep water case, you always have lower amplifications. Mm -hmm. so what's the reason for that? Actually? Uh, uh, but uh, as far as I remember, there is amplification for deep water wave amplification can be more than two times right and you just consider collision of two of two usually uh, you, you, you wouldn't get you always get twice the amplitude or of course if you have instability is another story yeah 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 uh, but interestingly you have in the kp framework much higher amplifications you get uh, if you just collide them in, in yeah, but uh, as far as I know, in recent studies by Alexei Slunyaev and some others, they, di they discovered that if we consider uh, uh, nonlinear Schrodinger envelope solitons interacting, uh, propagating with the same group speed, uh, in this case, due to nonlinear interaction, the uh, enhance enhancement of amplitude can be even more than four times. Okay. Formally speaking, up to infinity. Okay. Yeah, all right. Hi, Yuri. I just want to come back to what, what at the very end of those mark stems. So, in your derivation, what's the limit on the angle of the batch where that works, or is it independent of that? Limitation on the angle. The batch angle. How big can the angle be, actually, like that? Yeah. That right. what derivation works, actually, like that. Yeah. Uh, the answer is that if we consider uh one of the model equations like Adams of Petriashvili equation or quasi one dimensional uh Gardner equation or Benjamin on equation uh from the very beginning from the derivation uh yes. there is a restriction on the angle be because the uh, derivation uh requires that the angle between angle uh, between the axis of propagation and uh front of soliton should be relatively small only under this assumption we can derive the model equation but this theory which is presented here uh, i mean kinematic theory and um, after that uh, asymptotic theory um, does not require such uh, uh, such limitation we can consider an uh, arbitrary angle between solitary waves but would you then mean that the stem would grow way too fast because the angle is too At the moment, I can't answer to this question. It's an interesting uh, issue for the further study. Okay. So what is required within the framework of this developed theory is that solitary wave, one dimensional solitary wave should exist. If it is exist, in this case, we can describe, formally speaking, what happens uh, when they interact. Yeah. But again, it should be validated because, as mentioned already, formally there is no restriction for the amplitude of solitary wave, but it can be a wave breaking when the amplitude is greater than something. So this is this all these results obtained under the assumption that the pattern is uh, stationary. Okay, thank you. So thank you That's it. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>